This is co-host Mike with the first to last of the Nerddom. This week, we're doing things a little bit different. Uh, we are breaking up our main show into uh, a couple new shows. Uh, <coughs> we are uh, our, our main show, main content will always be Sunday Mondays. Uh, we are moving our recommendations out to its own show as it's grown. Uh, and there is a lot to cover there that will now be on Wednesdays. Uh, Fridays, uh, Star Trek, our mini, uh, our mini show about Star Trek The Next Generation Walkthrough. Uh, first view through for Thomas. Uh, we'll now move to Fridays. Uh, we hope you like this. Uh, as always, we uh, we encourage uh, you to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if there's something you like, if there's something you don't, if there's something you want us to cover, please let us know. We are expanding all the time here. We hope that these new uh, time formats, these new shows uh, across the week will be uh, a little bit more bite-sized per se, uh, and uh, will help engage uh, more of our audience. Uh, again, uh, this has been uh, co-host Mike with uh, the first, the last, the nerddom. Enjoy the show mm -hmm. um, for this week. Oh, what, what's up with Spawn? Like I haven't. I'm really curious about this because Todd uh, Todd got a hell of a shellacking not too long ago for being too anti PC or whatever. Like with the in relation to toys being made and certain kind of things he in was, there and i won't get into that but anyway uh it, oh, regardless, oh, uh, it, it, it definitely i love spawn like th this is like one of the ones that i like to uh keep track of once in a while i, I could get into it um uh, todd mcfarlane he's he's a big personality uh he was yeah, he is. so so big in in back in the day that um and I, I wasn't real keen on his artwork uh back then so i was really big into todd mcfarlane in fact i probably disliked him uh, for the most part, uh, back then, but, uh, I, I've, uh, came in, I've come back and, have uh, kind of dived back into those 90 comic books that I didn't read back in the day. And, um, I'm reading the huge, <laughs> uh, compendium yeah. of spawn. Uh, but, uh, it's, uh, each one of these collects the 50 issues and this is the second one. So this brings me up to issue 100 when i complete it so i'll have that to mark off on my uh 100 issue run of <laughs> of things uh but yeah and um, the only bad thing about these continue uh, compendiums uh they're they're reasonably priced they're 60 bucks and you have 50 issues so that's a little bit more than a, a dollar an issue and a lot of times you uh, especially on amazon you can find them a lot cheaper but uh but the only drawback of these is uh, they don't include the covers, uh, which would have added an additional 50 pages. And you can look at the covers online. So it's not a huge deal for me, but some people might uh, find it uh, as a huge deal. Uh, but, uh, but speaking of universes, uh, with Spawn, uh, Todd decided well, yeah, this property needs to be revitalized. And um, I started reading uh, it at issue 300 he sort of blew up the world and he's adding in uh he's added a bunch of different uh comics there's the the spawn title but he's also is doing king spawn he's doing gunslinger spawn uh and scorched i think those are the um the three or four i think it's four or five titles uh, that he's uh, coming out with. Um, so there's um, several different Spawn comic books coming out a month, and all of them are good. I'm, I'm collecting all of them. Uh, he has, uh, he's he's writing. Uh, I think he's writing King Spawn, or he's, or maybe I think he's writing Gunslinger Spawn. Uh, but he's definitely writing one of them, and he's got handing out the uh, writing chores on the other ones. Like I think with the spawn uh, that Rory uh, McConville is, is writing it on this one, uh, but but yeah, the the art solid, um, and uh, yeah, as far as the controversy with the toys, all he said was that um, uh, the female action figures don't sell well, <laughs> and I mean, and it's and, not really and he but and as surprised. As as the kids say, he has the receipts. Literally, he has the receipts on what sells. <laughs> he owns right. the company. He's selling these toys, and um, and he said he he didn't say that he wouldn't sell it, but um, 
that, that they're more of a, a niche thing that um, like say a special and, edition and, on on Amazon will sell well. Right. Uh, but and, it, but it, and, if and you put we're it, talking about we're, we're talking about a niche on top of a niche, uh, mm-hmm. even in then, even then, even then. Uh huh. And uh, <laughs> and and like you said in the interview, uh, you know the little kids the these toys are aimed at, you know, <laughs> their parent. If, if the parents went and got the the female character and brought it home to the boy, and that was the the one toy he got for however long he, he might not be happy <laughs> right, right and and that that's that's a generalization that doesn't mean all boys would be that way i'm right. sure some boys would be overjoyed with the female character uh and obviously the parents knows their kids and but... we grew up with and, and we grew up with i grew up uh, action figures team in uh all that you know like there there are strong mm-hmm. female you know, um, mm-hmm. action figures that did sell, you know, like to a clueless uh, kid who had no, knew nothing about any socioeconomic horseshit uh, on top of that part of my language. But like, you know, you, you just, mm-hmm. you got them. Mm-hmm. And now everything's, yep. every, now everything's special mm-hmm. and everything. It, it is what it is, mm-hmm. but you know. They, well, and, and there's, there's currently, there's a reason for the, um, the quote unquote boys section of the toy, <laughs> toy store and the, the girl, section i mean you know oh, in a lot of time and, and there's a cross-pollination uh but but you know <laughs> there's that and can, and things you, thing uh-huh. yeah, things you can change put a fresh paint, yeah you can put a fresh paint over whatever uh-huh. you want to call it didn't matter i don't uh-huh. care um there uh-huh. there there uh, and they're still going to be you know folks that have a kiddo or whatever and their their kiddo grows up and then they're just there's a reason why there's Thomas the Tank Engine, and there's a reason why there's uh, you know uh, uh, Paw Patrol, and there's a reason why there's uh, um, I'm trying to think of the the uh, uh, the, the female one, the the, the doctor. Um, good good grief, I'm, I'm horrible. I'm talking about toddler yeah, uh, right. franchises that 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 are popular, uh-huh. uh, you know, through time, whatever. Yeah, but in yeah. Case, yeah, exactly. It and, has nothing to do with this, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah and and. And culture's not static. Things change. Right. That, that may completely reverse. I don't know. I'm not putting a, a good, bad, uh, or worse on on any of this. This is just. No, no, this no. is just. This is just what sells. Well, <laughs> what doesn't sell. And, <laughs> and and you're you're naturally going to see like just mm-hmm. just zoom out five thousand feet real quick. And it, and it's comics are impacted. Manga everything and everything analog is impacted right so you have you have the music industry you have the film industry you have tvs you have everything that has massively changed and shifted over time regardless to whatever else is going on there those these things have been kind of popping up as we've kind of come to adulthood and then taken over and replaced the old thing so it's no wonder that uh, action figures at large are not as popular as they once were mm-hmm. you know once upon a time because like think about it if you're a parent or an adult, yeah, you have literally a never-ending spectrum in, in universe of entertainment that you can pick and choose from mm-hmm. um, to where it'll infinitely mm-hmm. fractionally divide your attention mm-hmm. and what Absolutely. you get into. And if there's a big ch- chunk of people that mm-hmm. get into, into it, then, you know, then you'll know about it later on because they'll make more of it, whatever. But uh, yeah, it and, still, uh, still doesn't matter <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, you know, and, what's good comes forward and, and hopefully is iterated yep. again and what is mm-hmm. not kind of drops yeah. off to the side as right. a niche thing you know right and also also to add to that um back in the day the action figures were, were big to me in that um you know you, we had I, we had video games but they're graphically the the action figures was uh graphically <laughs> much better than any video game whereas that's kind of reversed uh now but uh but and I'm an old guy. Todd McFarlane is an old guy. Amen. So our, our thinking may be kind of antiquated. And also, um, you know, big secret, <laughs> people that go to the, the majority probably that go to the toy store for to get action figures are my age or <laughs> within within our oh, age yeah. range. Oh, yeah. uh, so yeah. so with our antiquated uh, ideas of uh, <laughs> what, a, what an action figure should be, um, 
that kind of drives the market as well. well so. it, 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 it also, I think it also, there's a big point that people miss in all this, which is like, it's not necessarily the kid buying the thing right off the shelf. That's that, that is like what everybody thinks in their mind. The kid is going to the store to go get something that they want. No, 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 no. That, sure. That, that exists, but it's really more, it's the moms, it's the grandmas, it's the, uh, you know, and today's Mother's Day. So happy Mother's Day uh, to all the uh, wonderful women out there that uh, gave birth to uh, myself, my mom. And uh, I'm sure you have the same feelings for your mom. But anyway, yeah, yeah. It, since it is Sunday, I can't, I can't say that without going forward. But regardless, right. <laughs> it's the parent picking up whatever. So, you know, until the parent class um, understands like what's cool and what's not cool. You know, they, that, that gets determined by a lot of birthdays, a lot of, a lot of Christmas presents, a lot of mm -hmm. gifts across the board. So, uh, you can say what you want to make for an audience, but at the end of the day, yep. whatever, whoever buys it is going to be the yeah. ultimate determining factor, yeah. whether that is. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I didn't mean for this to kind of blow up in the big kind of mini discussion, but, fault. uh, the, the other, <laughs> That's that's uh, that's okay. Uh, but I was going to add that, um, yeah, uh, one of my nephews, uh, my uh, uh, my sister would buy certain toys for him, thinking that this is what what he he would want. He he just loved dinosaurs. That's all he wanted. Um, right. Yeah, you can get him a little house. He's going to put his dinosaurs in it. So right. uh, the di the dinosaur, <laughs> and for a while he he didn't have any. Um, uh, dinosaur action figures and um uh i think um and so he had a, a imaginary dinosaur friends and he, uh, he he had him in his pocket one i remember one time he fell and was upset because he had fell on his uh, imaginary dinosaur action oh, figure no. so oh. so so it was time time to get him some uh, dinosaur action figures at that point <laughs> That's awesome. uh, but yeah uh but yeah so so uh, Spawn has been a <laughs> good comic book so far. Uh, it's kind of revitalized and has uh, got people back interested in Spawn. And actually, I, I've got all of the titles on reserve because awesome. uh, they 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 tend to sell out. Like the key issues uh, do sell out for Spawn currently. And uh, also, the amazing thing about the the Spawn line—they're all two ninety nine comics. Um, Very cool. Yeah, where where the the norm is three ninety nine, and and Marvel and DC keep keeps trying to push certain issues back up to four ninety nine. Uh, this stays solid at two ninety nine, uh, right. all, unless 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 it's a double size issue, and then they price it accordingly. But uh, right. but yeah, uh, yeah. If if you were a fan of Spawn, uh, this is a great time to jump back in. Uh, there's several different titles to choose from. Awesome, awesome, yeah. Uh, with that, uh, the next one you, uh, we have on the list is uh, Hulk versus Thor. What's what's up with this one? <laughs> yeah, there's um, this is the 60th anniversary of Thor, Hulk, and Spider Man. But uh, oh, the okay. Donny Cates uh, is uh, the writer on Thor and Hulk. Uh, so I guess they thought, well, since they're both having a 60th anniversary. Uh, maybe uh, there's a, um, a story there, uh, and I don't know the details on their war because there's hasn't been a build up there. They've been kind of totally two different separate storylines. But Donny Cates uh, can be a, a good writer, and he's doing a great job on Thor. I'm, I'm really enjoying his run on okay. Thor, uh, and um, the Hulk to a lesser extent, but it's still quite interesting so i think this would be be kind of interesting and since this is sort of starting a whole uh, another storyline between uh the two titles i think uh this is the first part and uh the different parts call a balance between thor and hulk so if you're a fan of both uh this may be a good jumping on point i think um uh, both of their current storylines have wrapped up as of last month so this would be the I guess the big new story arc uh, for the two of them, and it'll be combined. So I, uh, I'm going to bookmark this one for sure. Okay. Oh, and uh, one, and this this comes out this Wednesday, uh, as well as that spawn one we spotlighted, and uh, just to uh, 
tell you last week uh, I told you about um, Dogs of London. That was sold out by the time I got to, and I went on Wednesday, the day of uh, comics. So I, I don't know how good that that one turned out to be. I guess I could grab the digital one, but uh, the actual uh, physical copy was sold out. Uh, so there was definitely an interest in it. I'm, I'm sure it was all due to our podcast. I'm sure everybody saw it and <laughs> was, was like, oh yeah, I, I, we got to get it. But uh, <laughs> nothing to do with the, the writer, P Peter Milligan, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Cool. And, uh, and then uh, uh, one other comic related thing on my end, I did go to um, comic book day and I got all the titles I was expecting. I, I thought these would be gone by the time I showed up, but um, Judgment Day, uh, this is going to be a big story arc between uh, Avengers, X-Men, and Eternals. Very uh, cool. There's going to be a huge fight uh, between all three. Uh, I did get the Dark Crisis uh, free comic Ooh. book. Yeah, and, I need to get um, that one, uh, that story it was kind of a non-starter. Uh, it, it was just filler, which I thought it would be. Uh, but there's some kind of interesting things in it and some kind of cool art. And it was free, so, you know. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the, the best one I got was Spider-Man Venom. Uh, the, there was a, a little story uh, by Zed Wells uh, of Spider-Man in this uh, that was really funny. And I enjoyed and um, kind of spotlighted a couple of interesting uh, villains that are coming up in the series. And then the Venom story was really, really interesting as well. So this this was uh, the best. Well, I'd say the best one of Marvel and DC. Uh, but um, the, the other ones, week. yeah, this one I got. I also got uh, the Bone Orchard Mythos. Uh, it's hard black, so you can't really see it. Uh, I'll take it out of the sleeve. Um, but it's um, it's it's a new horror anthology by Jeff uh, Lemire and Andrea Sorrentino. Uh, they did uh, Gideon Falls, and then uh, the one we're familiar with is Primordial. Primordial. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so this is their, um, and this is just a quick short story uh which was really really good i, I huh. this one overall is the, the best best one of the lot and uh the, it really makes me look forward to uh their their new horror anthology and they the it's interesting in that uh the first one that comes out i think it's in june or july called uh passageways it's just coming out as a hardcover graphic novel uh yep. and then and then the next one in the series is going to be uh, a five issue uh limited series they did say they're they're all eventually going to come out as hardcover graphic novels that you could set on your shelf all together and they'll all now, uh, that passageways nice it, it, it's mm -hmm. that's its own uh that's its own storyline that's its own yeah. that's literally what yeah. it's called like okay is that based off mm -hmm. that book uh it's it's all here, in here. the uh the the bone orchard um oh. I got you. Okay. Uh, what, kind yeah. of universe. That universe is gotcha. where all of all of those. And uh, this is sort of their roadmap. They have all the different titles on there. There's the passageway in June, and then um, in September there's ten thousand black feathers, uh, which I think is going to be a limited series. And then Tenement in 2023 uh, will be like I think another graphic novel, uh, but. I have to check um, the, that one out. the art art is fantastic uh the writing is uh top notch if you're interested in uh, kind of horror stories uh written well um in comic form it, it's great <laughs> and the other two i got uh for comic book day was um nottingham uh it's a um it's a series um that I was kind of interested in, so I just grabbed it. Uh, it was kind of an interesting story. Um, I don't know if I'll pick anything up additionally from this, uh, but it was, it was interesting. Uh, I might I might dip into it, I might not. Uh, and then <laughs> this one, uh, I think uh, this is a, a Grumble versus the Goon. I didn't realize it, but I would grabbed this for free last year, so so I got an extra copy. <laughs> but but um, and then they had some great sales, and I picked up 
uh, sub is killing the children part uh, volume two um, mm. and it's, it's written by uh, James Tinian the fourth and uh, it's um, a real popular series I read the first volume I was kind of lukewarm to it I thought it was okay uh, but everybody talks about how amazing it is so I thought well okay I'll get it um, on sale and I'll see see if uh, second volume will do it for me uh, but that's cool. uh, I know I, I kind of ran on at the mouth on all my crap, but <laughs> okay. that's that's it for me as far as comics today. <laughs> that's cool. yeah. I I uh, I'll have some returns here after I uh, but uh, the, the watching Blade Runner and whatnot kind of max up my uh, my capacity, but <laughs> uh-huh. I enjoyed it uh, all the way. But <laughs> I did. This was from um, the week of the twenty seventh uh, mm-hmm. review or uh, release, and it was Sabretooth number three. Not much to say, mm-hmm. uh, aside from it, it's, it deals with Sabretooth, um, and uh, Victor Laval is the uh, writer. I don't really know much mm-hmm. about him. Um, the artwork was pretty solid. Um, this is, uh, again, kind of stuck on Krakoa, um, them doing their own thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it basically goes along with uh, basically Sabretooth is prisoned um, with a few other folks, and it's basically how he can kind of sort of get out um, and, and, and the, the it's, I don't want to give too much away because it's kind of just saying that, um, <laughs> but, but it basically is exploring that vein of uh, kind of like uh, the backside of uh, Krakoa, I guess, maybe mm-hmm. would be the best way to put it, but uh, I'm looking forward. I, I need to go pick up uh, one and two and re- read those and then come back to kind of draw in. But the storyline so far is, is, is interesting. I wouldn't say it's the best ever, but uh, it doesn't suck. Um, and it, and it, it just is it's just interesting to see if they can carry through a very serious storyline with with the Krakoa storyline with the uh, Krakoa X Men um, as as it as it stands. And I, I do think that and I'm still working my way through the Wolverine series that I mentioned previously, but uh, this is yeah. kind of setting up uh, essentially set up the tables for the Wolverine side, and then they they're, they do these things like where they lay these these threads down. They might not revisit them for months or, or weeks later, but they, they eventually will kind of pick them up and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I remember that. But this is one of those storylines they're going to pick up eventually at some point and then do something with mm-hmm. in, in, in a higher level, like whether that's good or yeah. not. Um, we'll yeah. see. I'm kind of uh, mm-hmm. I'm slow diving my way back into X-Men. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so far, it's it's OK. You know, it's good. Yeah. It's good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but, uh, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I did read this one and I read the the first couple of them and I think uh, the writer's best known as a, a novelist. I, I got one of his novel novels on my Kindle that I haven't haven't read yet that I, I've been meaning to. I think he's more of a horror writer. I could be wrong on that, but uh, but yeah, and it kind of kind of shows in Sabretooth and that there's kind of a dark dark element to it. Uh, and like you, I think it's a, a solid story nothing spectacular but it, but it's pretty solid and and it's leading obviously <laughs> hopefully hopefully leading up to, to something and there's so many big storylines that are coming up like there the, are they're the, really the very, very con <laughs> uh last i think last year or the year before they had the big hellfire gala and they're <laughs> gonna have a, a new one this this year uh and i don't know if that's concurrent with the with Judgment Day, with the battle between X Men, Avengers, and the Eternals, or or what, how that all is going to fit in, and uh, what's going on with Wolverine and and, and the, the Immortal well, X Men, and it, and all of it, that. <laughs> and, and I don't have anything other than just uh, just being a comic book fan for so long. Um, I'm not <laughs> stupid. Like uh, if they have a big Wolverine arc that ended. Now they have this, uh, you know, mid or not even beginning off the ground. Saber, of course they're gonna, of course they're gonna, or, you know, like that's like that's, I'm not, that's not yeah. rocket science. That's uh, <laughs> that's a given with with yeah. these two. But yeah. uh, I'll, uh, maybe I'm wrong, uh, and if I am, whatever. But that's just my own little um, thoughts. But with that being said, that that rolls us into uh, um, this week's uh, where we finished off a uh, uh, Moon Knight. Um, unless there are any other comic. Stan, that's you wanted to highlight uh, if you're ready to roll into uh, Moon Knight. Uh, sure. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I can lead off with this if, if it's okay. Um, uh-huh. I, 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 I'm going to go with what I said before, and I think I was right. Um, I think Moon Knight was too short. 
Um, I think they had a lot of great stuff to work with. I don't think it sucked. Um, was I happy-ish with it? Uh, yeah, uh, for the most part. But, oh, man. Uh, it, it doesn't have me like uh, clamoring for more. Let's let's put that way. Um, like I would be excited for, but mm. it it's okay. Uh, it kind of, you know, there are three personalities of of Moon Knight, and mm. you really only see that book ended on the last one. Mm -hmm. um, that's about as spoilery as I'll go. But I don't know. I I I I, I kind of. Um, I don't know. Like I'm still kind of processing. <laughs> on, on the whole, I would still recommend it and to, to say watch it, but I'm not quite sure if I like. I don't know. <laughs> what What are your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I I have a friend that's a huge. Uh, she doesn't read the cut books, but she's a huge Marvel movie fan, and uh, she absolutely loved it. So, uh, the 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 normie <laughs> Marvel person um uh loves it and um oh, yeah. uh, and, i think it was single-handedly better than i i think it's the best that they've made up to this point hands down like uh yeah i'll go on the record saying like uh wanda who um captain falcon who or i'm making fun obviously. like uh right. this one was something that I, you could just get into and, and get in and not worry about being trapped in Jesus Christ, do I need to know the storylines for like the last 10 friggin' things that like mm -hmm. kind of like showed up here or popped up here? Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Like this, 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 it was refreshing from that standpoint that, that, that you don't have to, you don't have to, to uh, tag into the ring and know like everything else that has happened up to this point to get like maximum value out of it. Let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was enjoyable. Um, uh, I'll, I'll kind of echo my thoughts of uh, last last week. Uh, it's it's not my Moon Knight. I mean, it's not the one that right. I I grew, I grew up with. Uh, but and, and bears very little <laughs> uh, to to him um, except that you know that Stephen uh, or Mark Spector is, was an assassin. That's maybe in the in the costume <laughs> or about right. um about about uh, in con conch is uh are the constants uh it was nice to see the uh third uh third personality uh show up we won't say too much about that uh but um there was a uh i'm sure there's since it's marvel there's a ton of easter eggs uh but the one that uh, was pointed out to me uh the original artist of um, Moon Knight, Bill Sienkiewicz. I, I don't think he was the um, the first artist to do him, but he's he was the best known. He did the most most of the original run of uh, the uh, the series of Moon Knight. And uh, when uh, there's a there's a shot of exterior of a psychiatric hospital and it's the Sinkavich Psychiatric Hospital. Uh, they oh. ask him. They ask uh, ask uh, ask him if it was okay to um, uh, to use use that in the uh, show, and he said it, it it wouldn't be okay if you didn't. <laughs> he wanted definitely wanted that in there. Uh, so and um, but yeah, uh, yeah, it's it, it's it it told a told an interesting story. Um, and uh, like I said, it's probably uh, the best uh, series uh, so far, probably outside of certain episodes. What if? Um, but, but yeah, um, and I guess I, the next big uh, Marvel superhero show will be Miss Marvel. Um, and uh, I, the, to be honest, <laughs> I, I, I know very little of the characters. She's uh, not not a character I've been um interested in and from the people that i respect their opinion on things their opinion of it of her comic isn't very high of uh, the but but again the the show will be a whole different creature and you have to judge it on 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 its own merits so uh it, it could be uh the best thing ever uh i will I will give it a give it a try. Uh, I don't know if I'll, I'll stay with the, the whole thing, uh, but yeah, yeah. Miss Marvel, and then I think uh, She Hulk's after that. 
Okay, uh, I have more hope for She Hulk than uh, I'm. I'm going to skip Miss Marvel. Yeah. Um, and 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 I see that the only the the and and this is only me. Um, and but um, the best one out of the all the new ones that I have heard to pay attention to is Loki. Like that's the one that has the most. Um, mm -hmm. it kind of travels that road. I haven't. I probably won't. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, but um, what if? Mm -hmm. What if? I loved, I fell in love with that one, but that's because, again, you didn't have to know nothing about any of this stuff. You could just start fresh mm -hmm. from the thing, and I, I would rather, I'm more interested in that. I am not interested in continuing on the bigger overarching storyline, and I say that mm -hmm. in a year from now, I'm going to change my mind, obviously, but the way that they do these, the interweavings of this and that are are, are great if you're, if you're a big Marvel, Disney Marvel fan, great, good, good for you, but it's a little bit too much to take in. Um, and uh, it was just nice to be able to kind of mm -hmm. jump in Moon Knight mm -hmm. and see it. Um, mm -hmm. And they try to do a lot with it. Uh, I don't even know, yep. like, uh, mm -hmm. the one after. Uh, we'll, we'll see with She-Hulk because, like, mm -hmm. Hulk is one that uh, Disney Marvel has not done right um, mm -hmm. in, in certain things. Like, there's, yeah. um, there's a very long chain there, um, like, where you had Norton as, as Banner. You had Banna as Banner. Uh, you had, uh, uh, you know, Mark, uh, the new guy. Uh, good grief. I can name the last two, but I can't name the current Ruffalo. One. Mark Ruffalo. Yeah, Ruffalo. Yeah, yeah, Mark Ruffalo uh, as, mm -hmm. as Banner. So we'll see. Um, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I, don't, we'll see. Yeah, we'll I'd, see. Uh, I'd for <laughs> I forgot about Loki and Hawkeye. I don't know. Um, what I'm uh, saying is what, like what, 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 what that says, but... Yeah, Loki. Loki, I I enjoyed, and Hawkeye, I had very low expectations for, and actually actually enjoyed it. So, um, I in the, I think that has uh, more most mostly to do with Jeremy Renner and his charm and his acting. Uh, Jeremy that, Renner that, is, is saying he's a great actor. That, uh, yeah, great. his 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 character and um, just him in role carried that show. Uh, the girl that um, is the, I guess, the young uh, Padawan uh, Hawkeye, uh, she was, she was, she was okay in the the series. I don't know if they tried to spin it off and have her without Jeremy. Um, I don't think that will will work for me. Uh, could could for other people, but uh, I don't think it'll work for me uh, per se. In uh, uh, looking at uh there's there's a lot of stuff i don't want to watch that's coming up <laughs> i you know well, uh, that's that's the nature of the thing um and all these are 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 you know um keep eyeballs on the screen whether they're good or bad or you know whatever but uh you know like, there, there's some on this list that i would um circle back but that's not saying much um but yep. you know am i clamoring like i was in you know five years ago like where i wasn't burnt out by all this stuff you know, no, I, I don't bring that, but, um, you know, that's the wonderful thing is because they have gone in this direction and just to give credit where due, there are folks out there that are super excited about every little scrap that they can get. And good, that's great. You know, like oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. fandom, you know, they're drawn, mm -hmm. they're pulling from storylines that are more modern, more current, mm -hmm. uh, ones that they, they, they didn't mm -hmm. do justice to in the nineties yep. that, mm -hmm. they, that they, they took out of the freezer and reanimated, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. sometimes sometimes it was a zombie most of the time yeah. it's a zombie effort but sometimes they'll have something there and we'll see but uh with that being said uh anything else uh, uh we're mm -hmm. kind of a we're, we're, we're definitely in the expanded universe uh for this for this show but that's okay <laughs> yeah i think that's uh that's it although i'll just add one thing one extra thing to add and compound things but uh yeah the, the there are those fans that are are huge into this uh universe and eats up everything although i think there gets a point of diminishing returns um i uh, the only thing i would say i'm a cl complete fanboy for uh is um maybe david lynch and twin peaks twin peaks uh, is something that i'm obsessed with mm -hmm. however uh that we only only have three seasons and a few different uh books and whatnot to sink our, my teeth into if there was um 30 movies um you know 10 seasons of it i i, I it might be different 
I might not, but but the fact that there's very little uh, to grasp, but there's so much rich um, <laughs> mystery to to the whole thing uh, that you could talk about endlessly about uh, that that holds holds me more than um, these these kind of big blockbuster action movies. I would be but, totally. But, but, we have to be careful with that because I could easily talk about Twin Peaks for three hours uh, <laughs> or and, and derivatives and everything in between and all that. So mm-hmm. <laughs> one so, day. Well, uh, we're well, going to have to do a show and do it justice, uh-huh. do a real yeah. solid justice. Yeah. But until that day, uh, that, right. that kind of leads us on to this week's uh, YouTube recommendations. Uh, anything mm-hmm. else you wanted to add on on this little bit? No, no, that's it. Cool. Uh, so so uh, we have another documentarian this week. Yeah, he's, uh, he's an investigative uh, reporter kind of guy. Uh, Coffeezilla. Uh, the name's kind of misleading. Uh, I don't know the origins of the name. I've only recently kind of died to his uh, channel. He investigates uh, crypto, NFTs, uh, cryptocurrency, crypto scams. Uh, he likes to, um, he's investigated a lot of the uh, social media influencers uh, and their, their scams uh, dealing with NFTs and uh crypto he does he has a a one video uh where he goes in depth on nfts what they are uh what they aren't uh which was very informative to me i i heard nfts and i thought i had a general idea what they were but um they go a little bit more in depth and it's very easy to understand he doesn't if you think well cryptocurrency that's I, I don't know that's about it there there's certain channels that uh would probably be above our heads mine especially but uh but he does a very layman's terms kind of look at things and he's he's a very funny guy as well so it's it's just entertaining <laughs> even if you're uh sometimes even if i'm not 100 percent interested in what he's talking about sometimes i'll watch just just for the fun of uh yeah, watching good back <laughs> good yeah good background like kind of um mm-hmm. um uh, Dan, uh, uh, can't think of his name, but Hardcore History is like one I like to put on the background. And mm-hmm. never, I've never ran across this, mm-hmm. any of the. Would be interesting. Yeah. I, I, I yeah. have a good understanding of NFTs. Um, I kind of mm-hmm. disregard them as a technology professional, but that's neither here nor there because, mm-hmm. like, it's yeah. kind of the same thing as Linux, like where you have uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, uh, you, you basically have like the joke forever. Uh, this year is the year of the Linux desktop and it never comes like it's haha funny. Uh, it, it's kind of like, that's kind of the same Charlie Brown, Lucy football uh, thing with, with blockchain. Uh, this year is the year the blockchain is going to blow the doors off something and it never comes like that. Yep. It's, mm-hmm. it, it yeah, no. <laughs> is what it yeah. is. Uh, I'm not yeah, saying that, that it mm-hmm. doesn't have useful aspects, but mm-hmm. that's way beyond our podcast. Right. Nobody would care and, about that. And that, uh, that, current video of his the uh, celebrity crypto destroys itself uh you guys if you watch tv you may have seen that commercial with matt damon that was Um, so disgusting so gross yeah yeah and so he kind of goes over the history of this um this cryptocurrency and how it's kind of imploded on on itself and (laughs) kind of got a uh, a blade blade runner uh yeah he he definitely (laughs) does and uh occasionally he'll have a, a little robot friend that he talks to <laughs> but uh but yeah uh and he takes a few jabs at, at met damon in the process uh and uh and he's so gonna uh, challenged uh, a, a billion dollar fraud uh that went on and um a lot of those people that he uh, investigates uh will say I, I, i'm gonna sue copyzilla blah 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 he he always goes sue me sue me <laughs> so, uh, uh, he goes he goes I, I've, I've got the facts uh, to back me up and he does uh when he 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 goes into the nitty-gritty of those uh those crypto wallets and he kind of he explains it to where even i understand uh what he's talking about and uh uh it, if you're kind of interested in the, those those kind of scams in in finding out how they do it and um and, or just just kind of educate yourself a little bit more about the stuff uh try it try a couple of his videos uh if if you watch it and go oh, I, i'm not really interested then then back off but 
uh but yeah definitely give him a try and uh see see because like i said he's very entertaining and i always learn something something new whenever i watch uh, one of his uh uh episodes right yeah and if you're a blockchain nerd out there uh go ahead and and uh and and at me uh i don't really care <laughs> but, <laughs> it is what it is but uh you know what? The world has enough problems with trying to make Kubernetes fit into every single fit, uh, every single square inch of the universe. Like uh, so, uh, if you think blockchain is going to come along and serve the world, you got another thing coming. But <laughs> that's it, that's it, uh, another thing. Uh, I got to check this guy out. I'm definitely going to subscribe. Uh, another award-winning, dare I say, award-winning recommendation from Thomas. Uh, and mine is a lot, a little bit more uh, nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more thing like I realize like this will come up every once in a while and I will constantly watch it. Um, but, you know, but before I go, uh, was there any other things you wanted to mention about uh, CoffeeZilla? No, no, that's it. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, th this one is just um, it, it sci-fi, manga, comics, uh, movies. Scale is the name of the game. Yeah, his you know his tagline is the world in perspective. This basically kind of like it'll take you on uh, on a on a on a, a ride of like what the biggest uh, mechs were like I I watched that the other day uh, or you know like mm -hmm. what's the what the biggest uh, uh, a kaiju is uh, in mm -hmm. for the uninitiated kaiju are Japanese essentially for monsters so like Godzilla mm -hmm. you know Mothra that kind of thing um, it, it it'll go through it'll do the same thing with the uh, spaceship sizes like fictional um it just covers like it, it actually covers like real world stuff like asteroids like i saw one was asteroids and then another one was uh you know uh, you know obviously in in a sci-fi timeline or whatever but um just really cool like kind of facts uh i always love this kind of stuff because uh it, it gives you an idea of like how small and tiny and insignificant we all are that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Not much to say. Like that's just kind of their shtick. Um, that's about it. But uh, it, it's just a good, mindless watch. Throw it on, ten minutes max. You'll you'll be like, I had no idea that that was the largest mecca in, you know, whatever. And like, mm -hmm. I've watched their coverage, and they, they they really do a wide. They don't cover every single thing. Like it's impossible, but they cover some of the things that are more popular or sometimes more niche. But uh, just really kind of cool, like world, paint the world by numbers and like see the scale, uh, which is just interesting to me um, in, in general. Um, but uh, for the most part, they'll, they'll cover fictional stuff, which is kind of cool. Uh, and they'll also cover like real world stuff to kind of keep you in one foot in, one foot out. Uh, mm -hmm. Not much to say, but, um, you know, it's just cool, cool little thing that I found. Um, probably, I don't know, uh, on maybe a little over a year, under under two years, something like that. But with that being said, um, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that, all I got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that I, I'm not familiar with that channel. I'll have to kind of check into that. That's kind of fun. I yeah. always, I always, I, I, I'm not not that type of nerd, but um, I'm always fascinated by those nerds that go deep diving into stuff. Um, right. You know, there's there's certain nerds that. Um, to reference one of our our, our other uh, show, uh, they'll dive deep into everything Star Trek: The Next Generation, right. and, and go into the minutia of how many times Riker said something, or right. you know, it, it, it's always fascinating me that, uh, how people will will go deep into to certain things, and uh, but yeah, that that's always and and uh, and. Also to uh, promote, uh, we also have uh, another show that we do. I'm doing do. a first time watch of Star Trek: The Next Generation. We're uh, this Wednesday episode four comes out, and uh, and if you haven't seen the series and want to check it out along with me, you could do so. Or if you're a fan of the series and just want to hear my modern take on uh, an old show that's uh, on your favorite old show, <laughs> then uh, give it a watch. Indeed. And yeah, please, please. Uh, and, and again, um, if you like what we're doing, if you don't like what we're doing, let us know either way. Comment, like, subscribe. We, we must feed the algorithm gods because we <laughs> die by the algorithm gods. So whatever you have, mm -hmm. bring it our way. We'll talk about it. Yep. And, uh, and until we're canceled, we're the first, the last, the nerdum. And I'm Thomas, Indeed. and that's Mike Shaw. This has been Mike.
Yep. See you later.